Hello and welcome to the final part of this video tutorial series. This is Mark Labar at BlenderPassion.com and in this video we're going to be showing you how to render it all out and finish it up. So I'm just going to go and select all of the objects involved in our minifigure here in object mode. So there's everything. I'll hit Control G, Control G, create a new group and I'll name him Jim. And here is our entire figure finished. So say I had this figure and I didn't want to rig another figure or mess around a whole lot. And I have this scene here and I want Jim to be in my scene. So I would go to file, append, or I could also link it. You can look up documentation for that, but I'm appending it right now. Part four, and I'll just go to groups and then Jim. And there's Jim right there. I'll actually go to groups here. I'll select Jim and I'll scale him down by 0.5 just so he's in line with the rest of the scene. And linking it, you can also link him, which if you change the original file, he also changed in all the other files that he's involved in. But I'll append it for now and we'll just sort of position him to about where he's supposed to be, selecting all of Jim. You could also go ahead and select just the root bone of the armature. But I'll do it this way for now. And I'll position him right there. I'll position the viewport to something maybe around here. Maybe let's just see how that looks. And I am missing one material here that I forgot to add. And it is the glass material. So I'll go ahead and show you how to quickly do that. I'll delete the glossy shader and add in a transparent BSDF. Put it right there and increase the fact value to make it more transparent than diffuse. And we can already see a good improvement there. It's not some solid white opaque piece of block that's supposed to be glass. So about 0.826. Give it an arbitrary value about in the correct spot. And we'll just go ahead and continue on. I'll direct the sun. Maybe a bit of more noonday time. And I'll give it a slightly light blue color, make it a nice sky color. And then we can just go ahead, I'll save it again, go into the world panel. And let's see, what. I don't think there's much to change here. Of course we'll also need to go to the world tab here on the note editor if we want to change anything. So I want to, well instead of having some random HDRI, map in the background. I want an actual, just a solid color in the background. And to do that, we'll just add in the light path node here. And let's see, add in maybe, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing here. So you're just going to have to bear with me going through the well, slightly trial and error process. Maybe an RGB node. See how that looks. And we'll throw in a, maybe a mix, mix RGB. Throw that in the fac and this in the color too. See how that looks. It looks pretty bad. Probably not what we're going for here. Maybe if we switch it. And that doesn't help. <coughs> Excuse me, not one bit. So what we actually need is instead of a color mix, we need a shader mix. And of course you can actually see that through the the green output and input. So it all matches. So I'll just go ahead and fix all that. And finally is camera ray into the fac value of our mix shader. So let's just take a look at that. And things are looking pretty weird here. And that's of course because well, we need something something to put in the second input and it's not going to take our color output of the RGB node and of course we need a background node and we can just get rid of the RGB node and we'll give it a somewhat of a decent sky blue color maybe too strong yeah that looks pretty bad
The rest of the scene is... It's shaping up. So I just found out that my external hard drive ran out of memory. Starting to move things to the cloud, but that's a little too late. So I did skip a few parts here, but nothing you need to know. If we add in a camera and press Control alt numpad 0 we'll put it directly where our viewing is. And you see I've added a little backdrop, and that's just what I've shown you how to do in the previous tutorials. Nothing new there. And we're just going to position this according to the camera. And to do that, I guess we can either parent it or quickly add an object constraint. Give a bit more control over it. And again, I did that wrong. Don't, don't follow me. <laughs> what I'm doing here because it's been so long since I've done little things like this that I can't remember what I'm doing. So I'll be playing around with this for a while. And let's see, what else do we have? We have a few things going on here. What other constraint does something for us? And I guess, yeah, we'll do a child of constraints. We'll target the camera here, and set inverse, and there we go, when we move the camera the backdrop follows. So we just need to position our backdrop, so it's facing the camera right now, and then whenever we move the camera, if we wanted a different angle or anything like that, we will also move the backdrop. Move it back on the local Y axis, get something decent, Control R, add in a loop cut here, Give it a nicer slope, and things are looking quite nicely. And we'll go on a little bit of extra here. And we're just going to add some depth of field. Let's see if I can focus in on Jim here. Well, I didn't name any of the parts, so that's going to be a pain. So we need to increase the distance, or decrease it, so that the marker is on Jim. And right now we do not see a marker, and that's because we don't have limits selected. So again, after recording has failed, I am back. And I have limits selected now. And I just positioned it about where Jim is, and you just do that by changing the distance, just like so. So now it's right on Jim, and he's going to be in focus on the camera. So if we... Well, I'll just go ahead and try to make sure everything's in order. Go up to the node editor, and we'll just see what looks good. Strength is looking good. I did change a few things here. Changed a different sky color, I think, though we won't need that. Well, yeah, we won't need that because we're using the HDRI map for our lighting, and we won't even see the sky. So I'll bump up the samples to about a thousand. I think that'll be my final render. Could be a few more, but for now I'll leave it at that. And I kind of wanted to get into stock, selling stock images. wonder how well a little Lego image would go for. And yeah, higher resolutions. And maybe something like that for the ratio. Actually, I'm not sure what I'm doing right now. I'll go back to full HD 1920 by 1080. We'll leave that for a later date. 1,000 samples, I'm not going to mess around. And let's just see how this looks. And here is the final image. Everything looks pretty decent. Noise could be less, but it actually looks really nice. And this is without any compositing at all. And it is good for a quick little demo scene. It does look really nice. And it only took about 50 minutes on my 4 year old laptop, so I'd say that was pretty good. I actually forgot to check some of these final render options. So that would have taken a bit of time off the final render. So just keep that all in mind. And if you like this tutorial and it helped you, please like, subscribe, comment, and thank you for watching.